smile, Tony. We're making memories. <laughs> no matter what the cost. No matter what the cost, yes. Guys, I'm at Tony's house and I'm about to start um, the build. This is where we're going to be putting the bench seat with storage space right in there. So hopefully this will only take um, less than a day. Top vitamin. So I started by cutting out the old caulk. That helps adhere the baseboard to the walls. Sometimes when you remove the caulk, you also pull off paint, so be careful doing this. I did it right here, but I was able to patch it with some drywall compound. And then I just took a sharp putty knife and scraped off the remaining painter's caulk. Here I'm measuring for my 2x4s that I'm going to cut in the garage. And finding studs and marking them with a level so I know where to screw the studs into. I like to put a top level line where the wood's going to be located. It helps me visualize it and give me a starting point. I started some three inch screws, put it up there, screwed in the corner. I can put the level on then and then start screwing it in across to make sure it stays level. And then I also added some lower support two by fours here. I want this to be really strong. Use the foot clamp, always have that with you at all times. And here I'm transferring the stud locations using a foot clamp and a hammer reach. Rinse and repeat on the other side. I gotta figure out my math for this distance here to build a wall that goes across here. So I'm gonna do that off camera. So I measured, went out to the garage and started cutting. I was using Tony's Craftsman 10 inch miter saw and it was not cutting all the way through the two by four for some reason. When your friend says, hey, leave your saw at home and use mine, yeah, don't. So this is how I had to cut all the two by fours laying down, which is not the right way. If you have two boards that you want to cut at the same length, you can use clamps to put them together. Just make sure they're even at one end and you will get an exact cut on the other side. Works every time. I unmounted my pocket hole jig from my workbench at home and brought it with me. It was very helpful. And then I just built a ladder that will stretch from one side of the wall to the other and serve as the front face of the project. Hello, pocket holes. Build that wall. And then a pre-drill and secure with three inch screws into the studs. I put some bottom supports on it so the front wall did not kick inward at the bottom and then started putting up the top supports. Pocket holes in the rear and three inch screws through the front. It's getting pretty strong here. And I also put in corner braces just in case 
they say they want to have a bunch of adults sit on this. What else they're going to do on it, I have no idea, but I don't want them falling in. Tony's cleaning up after me. Hey, you missed a spot. Right in there. Right, there. right in there. Right there. Then Sue had asked me if I could replace the baseboard inside. So I did, to her wishes. No one will ever see this baseboard in Beishu, but if they ever have mice that live in there, they will be happy. Then it was off to cutting the sheet goods. The front measures 104 inches across, so I was cutting two pieces of half inch plywood, which will meet in the middle and be covered by a strip of trim. Here I'm using Tony's broke ass caulk gun. Again, when your friend tells you he has tools, don't believe him. Just some liquid nails and 18 inch, 18 gauge brad nails, one and a half inches long. Oh, first of all, I'm gonna see how it fits. And then you're gonna lock me in here. Don't get too excited. I'm not gonna stay in there. Damn it. All right, so I'm going in. Hold on. <laughs> going in? Give me your pencil. Here's your pencil. All right. Um, do you have a flashlight? Yes, I do. Excellent. Put it on your head. If I'm not back in an hour, finish it without me. <laughs> should be good. Ow. Don't try this at home, kids. <laughs> really, don't try it at home. Okay. There you go. Bye. All the way back, right? Yeah. yeah. All the way back. Right. Yeah. Okay, so I gotta bring it back. Sorry. It's okay. Can't find good help anymore. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. You know, it would be a horrible way to die being locked in a coffin. <laughs> I'm now tracing the square opening. I'm coming out. <laughs> Call the media. Call the media. He broke out. Coming out, kids. It's always going to come out. Don't be afraid. Because your parents will still love you. Mostly. Damn contortionist. Oh, all right. Here I just put a Forstner bit on my drill. I could have used a half inch drill bit. This is just starter holes for the jigsaw so I can cut the square out. I should have purchased jigsaw blades prior to this project, which I did afterwards because mine were quite dull. And then it's time to make a template out of some pizza boxes. I do this instead of measuring because it is more of an exact fit. I used to be an A plus art student. That's why I know how to do this stuff. Right, Tommy? Tommy, my friend Tommy Pierce. He was also an A plus art student. There might be better ways to make templates, but right now I'm out of ideas. What'd you learn today? How to make a template out of a pizza box. And I didn't even get to have any of the pizza. No glue needed to secure the top, just uh, 18 gauge nails. Then I transferred my template to a sheet of plywood and used a straight edge to make the lines nice and straight. I really hate cutting wood like this because it moves. It's good if you have someone else there to help lend a helping hand. Or in this case, Tony lends me a few fingers. 
Thanks, Tony. And then the foot clamp, which works really well when you weigh over 150. Time to see how it fits. Pretty nice. Rinse and repeat, side two. Giddy up. I hope you enjoyed part one of the window seat build. If you'd like to see part two, click here. Thanks again, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give me a like.